Along the border of Mpumalanga and KwaZulu-Natal is the quiet, laid-back town of Wackerstrom. It's one of the oldest towns in northern South Africa, dating back to 1859. Wackerstrom is one of the only towns in South Africa, and maybe in the world, that hasn't been founded at a specific spot out of a local need. Dirk Cornelius Ace, better known as Swart Dirk Ace due to his dark complexion, and two others known only as Gunther and Hubert, were asked to search for a place to establish a new town and congregation. They travelled inland from Potchefstroom and stopped overnight. When they woke in the morning, they were mesmerised by the area, and so Wackerstroom was born. Um, one of our old-time residents here says there's a magic in the air in Wackerstrom. It either gets to you or just passes you by. And those of us that live here just absolutely love Wackerstrom. There's so much to offer, not for residents only, but for tourists that come through. Tourists come here looking firstly for birding, which is certainly the single biggest attraction in the area. The little town is a must for any bird lover. With a natural wetland in the area, Wackerstrom attracts all kinds of bird life. At this altitude we get all three crane species, the grey-crowned crane, the blue crane, our national bird, and the wattled crane. We get a, a species of fluff-tail here called the red-chested fluff-tail in our wetland. We get the African rail, uh, we get various busted or korahan species, and we get a couple of specials like the Rudd's lark, the Boerta's lark, and we have the yellow-breasted pipit quite close to the village as well. Because Wackerstrom we have special beds. Larks, most of the people are interested in larks. We have two uh, imported larks here, Rudd's lark and Porter's lark, and also Korans, uh, blue Korans, white-bellied Korans, a crowd woodpecker, fluff tail, uh, we have a lot, we have a lot. Pipits, rock pipits, yellow breasted pipit. People are at, uh, like rat slug, butter slug, yellow breasted pipit, uh, fluff tail, you only find in Wackerstrom. So that's why people are interested in Wackerstrom. Being a natural haven for bird life, the area is an ideal location for a bird sanctuary and creates an opportunity to educate people on the environment. BirdLife South Africa is a conservation NGO that uses birds to focus people's attention on environmental issues. Our focus is more or less in three areas, which would be habitats, sites, conservation, and people. Recently, the natural heritage came under threat when a company acquired a license to mine coal in the area. But with the work of the Wackerstrom Protected Management Committee, this is no longer a concern. I think obviously I believe that you have had discussions on the mining issue. Um, we, have, we are part of the protected environment, the Wackerstrom Protected Environment Management Committee, which is looking to get Wackerstrom declared as a protected environment. Should this happen, we'll be the first town in South Africa to be ever included into a protected environment. But locals know that birding alone cannot grow the tourism market here. We also need to understand that we need to grow our tourism market, that not everybody wants to watch and come and see birds. We do a lot of maintenance and repair around the heights. But I think we need to look at mountain biking going into the future. We have a wonderful music festival. We need to look at walking in this particular area. Highlighting just how pertinent tourism is to the economy of the area, the Wackerstrom Inn is one of the biggest employers in town with a staff of 21. The inn is a great place to spend a weekend or even stop over. We offer a fantastic family package at the Wackerstrom Country Inn. You can either bring your own mountain bike if you don't have one, you can rent one from us, or you can bring your wife and the family and while we take the boys on a nice out. Uh, off-road ride, the wives can go for a nice massage or facial for, with our therapist. 
The inn is community orientated, not just in terms of its staffing, it also gives back. We also do try to put a lot back into the community. We sponsor the local soccer team, which is a champion team in the whole, in the whole area, sponsored by Dirt Maniacs and Country Inn. And uh, yeah, you must come visit us and see what we can offer. South Africa may be home to the Big Five, but Wackerström is home to this unusual animal. The first alpacas were imported here in the year 2000. So only, they've only been in South Africa for 13 years. So we started with 60, the first import, and now 13 years later we're up to about 4,500 nationwide. At Mystique Alpaca, you can not only see these interesting creatures, you can pick up some sought-after yarn. Um, the reason one would keep alpacas is for their fiber or their fleece. So they're shorn only once a year and the best fleece is on the saddle which is the base of the neck to the tail and halfway down the tummy. That's the best fleece. So that's your yield from one animal per year. Um, it's highly prized because it's so light and it's so warm. The other thing is because they have no natural oils in their coats, it's non-allergenic. So a lot of people can't wear natural fibre, they start scratching or getting rashes. Or, but even babies can wear alpaca. <laughs> As a fishing town, fresh fish is a treat at this bistro. Yes, we do have two menus. We have a tapas menu, a long list of small little things that uh, people sit and eat under this tree over hours with lots of wine. Or we have an a la carte menu uh, that varies, uh, very continental, lots of duck, um, lots of Mozambican crab, massive clams, lots of seafood, sole. Um, we do do the flash fried fillet, only rare of course. Lots of, lots of fish. With plans in the pipeline to declare this a protected area, tourism is on the up here. There's a tranquility in Wackerstrom. People can be who they are. Visitors make the mistake of visiting us and thinking we're a lot of country hillbillies, and we most certainly are not. It's very much a retired uh, people in, the, in the, the village, but they're doctors and they're engineers and they're CEOs and CFOs. So people have a lot to offer in the village. And there's just, you can be as social or as antisocial as you like. People get together, people love to care. And when you don't feel like that, you stay at home and stick to yourself. But there's a sense of community here that is so strong. People look out for one another, people care about one another. They see needs and they address that, those needs without anybody asking them to do so. They just do it of their own free will because we all just want to see Vakustrum prosper. The residents of Wackerstrom really do seem committed to making the area a tourism success. Joining me now from Wackerstrom to talk about protecting the ecology in the area is Director of the WWF Grasslands Project, Angus Burns. Angus, thank you so much for making the time to talk to us. Of course, before we go into the merits of the, uh, of the Grasslands Project, tell me a little bit about uh, what WWF is involved in. WWF South Africa is an international uh, NGO, environmental NGO, that uh, focuses on, a, uh, there's a number of key foci for the organization. Uh, there's marine, there's, uh, uh, there's a living planet unit in South Africa, there's the grasslands program, uh, there's an area, there's a, a, a component of work focusing on Feinbos, um, and globally we focus on a lot, number of catalytic initiatives that bring about change so that this world and, and, and this country and our planet as a whole becomes uh, a better place for future generations and is looked after in a sustainable way. So our reach is, is, is very far reaching and uh, the, the organization in South Africa has its own key foci, one of which is the grasslands component of work. And what is WWF's involvement in the Vakustrom area? WWF South Africa has had a very long 
and, and productive presence in the Wackerstrom area. Um, we started a project over 12 years ago called the Nkangala Grassland Project, where our focus, uh, which spans three provinces, inevitably centered around the Wackerstrom area. And uh, in collaboration with a number of partners, including Imp the Mpumalanga Tourism and Parks Agency, uh, Sanbi, as well as BirdLife South Africa and Endangered Wildlife Trust, we helped to establish the first protected environment in South Africa, in southern Mpumalanga, as well as protected environments spilling over into the KZN province and a number of other earmarked areas for declaration. Everything in line with provincial and national pr pr uh, protected area expansion strategies. So in other words, these areas need to be proclaimed in order for the province and the national government to achieve objectives. And, and these are conservation objectives and targets that cannot be achieved in their present state unless those areas are formally declared and protected. Let's talk conservation in the area. Um, where do we see conservation meeting the grasslands project? What one notices whenever they drive through the Wackerstrom area and southern Mpumalanga in general is the multitude of wetland areas. And as you know, wetlands are a critically important component of healthy functioning river systems. Now in this area we find the origin of four major river systems, the Pongola, Usutu, Val and Tugela river systems all find their origin here. It is thus critically important from a water security perspective to conserve these areas. Now linked to that is the fact that incredibly rich and unique biodiversity is also found in the area. And this all ties in very nicely with the development of ecotourism ventures in the province. If you lose that natural habitat, those grassland habitats, you not only affect the potential for ecotourism, but you also affect the future water security of South Africa. One must remember only 8% of the surface area of South Africa produces more than 50% of the water for the country. So it is critically important that we conserve that 8%. And we're very lucky in the grasslands that a lot of those 8% areas also have an amazing biodiversity. The prospect of mining is an absolute concern in this particular area. Tell us a little bit about what's going on there. What is happening presently in South Africa is uh, there is a, what appears to be an unprecedented land grab for mining and prospecting rights throughout the country. Wherever potential reserves for particularly coal are, are to be found. Now, I want to emphasize that we are not anti-mining as an industry. We are only saying that mining should take place in res responsibly and in line with certain benchmarks like the South African Biodiversity and Mining Guideline. And additionally to that, key water production and biodiversity areas should be excluded from such activities because they are not compatible with particularly coal mining. Now in southern Mpumalanga, uh, the, the interest in coal mining have just skyrocketed. And there is major tension now between conservation and the mining industry. What has happened is areas that have been for a very long period of time earmarked for declaration as protected areas are now in direct competition with prospecting or mining applications. And there is this terrible, um, how shall I say, uh, polarization that's presently happening where conservation is perceived as anti-development and mining is perceived as pro-job creation. Now that is misleading. One must remember that tourism and the agricultural sector is a very, very big, very fast growing industry. And in this part of the world, the type of agricultural practices, which is mainly rangeland farming, is perfectly compatible with tourism. Presently, there's a mining application less than 20, 30 kilometers outside of town, uh, which could directly impact the biodiversity of the area and its tourism potential.